this atlas of uh, global marine fisheries is uh, special in that it is really global. It is not uh, uh, something that has a few case studies uh, here and there and claims to be global, but uh, really the whole world is covered. How we have uh, for each country a page, each country or part of a large country, a page that uh, with a little text that uh, summarize the major trends in that fishery. Uh, we have obviously a map of the region of which we speak, and we have uh, a time series of the catch by sector, by uh, countries, and by uh, species with key references. And we have that for every country in the world, every, every little island uh, on whatever continent. There are 273 um, <clears throat> accounts like this, but uh, this is introduced by uh, uh, 14 global chapters that present uh, either application for uh, here about birds and, and about pollution and about, about models that we have done of the ecosystem, but which as a whole uh, present the method that we use in this uh, one page account. And <clears throat> the combination of the methodology that is global, that is applied systematically and uh, coverage uh, of one place after the other ensures that we have uh, covered with a uniform methodology uh, and uniform standard the, the entire world. So you can get details on the fisheries of your country if you are interested, for example, in Mexico, Atlantic, Mexico, Pacific, Micronesia, uh, uh, Myanmar, Mozambique, Papua New Guinea, Panama in the Pacific, Panama in Qatar, Romania, and so on. You can get this information, but also you can get global trends. Why? Because if you add up uh, the independent data that we have uh, time series for, if you add up to a total, you get reliable estimates that are uh, global. The main finding is that we catch more than we think. Uh, about 50% more, and um, uh, le which is a good thing. But on the other hand, we found that the the catch declines uh, since the mid 90 uh, uh, the mid 90s, specifically since 96, uh, declines uh, at the rate of about 1.2 1.3 million tons per year, and that is a, a one of these strong trends that is not invalidated by one year having a, a, a higher catch than the previous one. If, if this, for the trend to be reverted, you have to have a consistent trend uh, of four or five years uh, increase for the trend to be broken. And we, we don't find that. So basically, um, we have a, a strong trend of decline, and this is probably due, most probably, due to overfishing. Because in the majority of countries where we have good statistics, reliable statistics, we find that the catch is declining. The only countries where we have increasing catches, um, in, in, increasing catches are countries generally that have un, unreliable statistics. So you have reliable statistics that go down and unreliable statistics that go up. And uh, this unrealistic increase uh, you can detect um, uh, in in countries that have really no statistical system and in which the political uh, uh, demand uh, you increase the catch says the minister uh, is translated into falsified statistics and the FAO the Food and Agriculture of the United Nations uh, receive then these statistics compiles and makes them available and this is a world catch but they, there is good reason to doubt this, and and uh, on the basis of this book, um, but we we have not been able for the countries that that produce unrealistic statistics to, to provide an alternative. But we have made them consistent with the, the other countries in which we have considered the discarded fish that FAO doesn't consider. We have considered. Uh, the recreational catch that is not uh, usually uh, included in statistics. We have considered the catch by uh, 
the subsistence culture is by woman, uh, by woman or in children or men also. In many, many Pacific countries, for example, small Pacific Island country, the subsistence culture is enormous relative to any other catch. Uh, um, and uh, they, they, it is not simply not covered. It is not covered in official statistics. And, and so the trajectory that we get for these countries are very different from the official ones. So we have, and we have also distinguished between the different sectors. Um, in the official statistics, you don't get a difference. Uh, uh, you don't know if the catch is, uh, was made by industrial vessels or with the, with the small boats. Uh, we have used the definition uh, in each country that separates small-scale and large-scale fisheries. The, the book provides a new baseline. Um, uh, essentially, this new baseline is that should be that uh, the ocean are more productive than we thought, and especially coastal waters are more productive than we thought. You can extract, and you, we have extracted bigger catches than we thought, and therefore it's worth uh, in the course of rebuilding efforts to to rebuild toward a larger biomass. And this is a, a positive message, I think, that the idea that we can we can rebuild toward bigger biomass, uh, we can we can actually if we if we are successful in our rebuilding effort anticipate higher catches higher catches than we have now because the we have we have maintained high catches uh, worldwide by not by rebuilding uh, by sustaining and rebuilding uh, what the stocks that we exploit but by by moving to new stocks all the time and, and fishing them down so if we rebuild the stocks where we have been and uh, uh, for example uh, in europe the stocks are still devastated and uh, if they were rebuilt the pressure europe would not need to export so much fishing effort toward africa for example you would not be able to say aha this is because of the atlas but uh, but uh, I think they will. It will contribute to the mood, to to the knowledge and uh, the background knowledge that ha have uh, have to address problem. Um, I do expect it to be cited like crazy because because we cover all countries uh, in the world and uh, a, a huge range of topics in uh, global chapters. But I do expect it to be cited a lot. So yes, it's going to be influential.